A big bucket for Harrison Barnes. This is Kevon Looney. Welcome back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Take it away, Steiny. All right, let's get right to him. He is the only Northern California media member to see all 84 yeah. Warrior games and all 84 Kings games this season. What's up, J.D.? Jay. What's going on, fellas? Good I'm to be just, with you. Good to see you last night, Goo. Yeah, we take a little flicky. I just look terrible, but uh, I, I, I look thinner than I really am, so I posted it. But uh, yeah, Jay, it was good to see you, baby. All right, so he, here's where I want to start. Uh, you're more familiar with these teams than just about anybody. Give me one thing in the first two games that's kind of surprised you, and then give me one thing you're saying right now. I, I think I was right about that one. Mm. Well, uh, as far as what surprised me, I, I think it's been the Kings' ability to defend the Warriors at a at a higher level than than they've really been able to defend anybody at any point this season. I, I think that that's probably it on that side of things. I think the Warriors have helped them out at times, whether it's the the turnovers last night, and I thought the Warriors fixed some of the shot selection issues from game one to game two, but they committed so many awful turnovers that it was you know it didn't matter the turnovers were enough and just you know missed opportunities I, I I'm I shouldn't say I'm totally surprised by this on the Warriors side of things but I, there just has been a a little bit of a, a a defiance or an impatience or an unwillingness on their part still to accept the challenge that they may have to go about things a little bit differently in this series against the Kings than they've done it all year long or even over the course of these last few championships. And what I mean by that is play a little bit, a little bit less frenetic, a little bit calmer, dare I say a little bit slower to, to make sure that you're, you're getting into your offense without committing a careless turnover initially and then running your offense to completion because still last night there were a lot of times when the Warriors could get into their offense quickly, they're still getting that layup line that they got a lot in game one and making Sacramento pay, but they, they've let the Kings off the hook in different moments, and when they've let the Kings off the hook with a bad shot or a turnover, the Kings... They hit you with these little six nothing runs, and you know they flip the game. Instead of being up eight, you're up two. Instead of a tie game, and this happened right before halftime. The Warriors worked so hard in the second quarter. After the second quarter really got away from them at the beginning, they had the game tied. They give up the final six in the last minute, and it's a turnover. It's a bad shot. Kings get two buckets, and and all of a sudden you got to climb the mountain again. Coming out of, of, of halftime. But it's just, there's almost a, you know, your greatest strength can be your greatest weakness component with the Warriors where, you know, they've done it this certain way and they're used to it being good enough. And I think they are in some ways a little bit stunned through the first two games that the Kings have been able to stand up to them and hit, you know, match them with big shots in moments where the Warriors have made big shots, match them in big defensive plays in the moments where the Warriors have, have made big defensive plays. This the, the overarching theme to this point, I think, in this series has been when the Warriors' offense has been playing well, their defense hasn't. When the Warriors' defense has been playing well, top of the game when they hold the Kings to 17, their offense hasn't been playing well, and so they haven't been able to create any true separation in, in these first two games once they've had a little bit of the momentum. Jay, I mean, that was well said, and I got like a hundred questions for you, but I did start our show because uh, you helped me. I was telling Stoney, I went to Oracle, we believe, against Dallas. I, I'll never forget it, but I will never forget what that, that building was like last night. It was incredible. You talked about it game one, but Jay, I'm going to go to the box score here because Nobody is off limits in regard to criticism. And I would just love to know what Steve Kerr is thinking. Because, Jay, when I tell you Jonathan Kaminga played four minutes, Gary uh, DiVincenzo played 13, didn't take a shot, didn't play the second half, Poole didn't play the fourth quarter, he played 16 minutes. My only – why I got this energy, J.D., is – how do you compute that? Because I told Steiner, you got to dance with who you brought. You don't got other players. Why are you pulling their – I mean, 
What's he doing running the up the top heavy guys in the ground? I couldn't believe who I didn't see getting the game for whatever reason, Jay. This shocked me. Did it shock you or no? Well, here's the thing, and, and there's a lot to chew on here. I, I told you guys yesterday, if I'm Steve Kerr, I wouldn't play Jonathan Kaminga You did at say all. that. Wow. Jay, and, why? And Real I, quick, why, I thought Jay? He was, I thought he was that bad in game one, He and, 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 <sighs> and I think – it, to me, it came down to, and I'm going to give you the answer, but it's, uh, I'm going to stretch it here, but I made a bunch of bullet points on this thing. I thought the way Kerr was rotating his players throughout the first quarter, and I texted Steiny this, I thought Kerr was setting it up, and they were up 23-17 at the end of the first, but he was making some quicker subs, and you know, one guy for this guy, next guy for this guy, and I thought he was setting it up to, to bypass Kaminga in the rotation at the beginning of the second quarter, and, and that was going to be to not play him at all. And then he went to him at yeah. the beginning of the second quarter, and it was awful. Monk got him. Fox got him. Kevin Herter, he was terrible on a, on a rotation back, gave Herter an open three that he buried. Jonathan Kaminga, in the four minutes he played, guys, was the worst player on the floor, and it was a huge part, albeit subtle to the casuals. And I'm not calling you a casual, yeah. dude, but, they're, but, they're, but you're not the only one that's come down my road on Kaminga. He was the worst player on the floor for those four minutes, and a huge part of the reason why that game flipped from the Warriors being up six to basically being in a point where for two and a half quarters, they were fighting to not get run out of the gym based on the, the, the energy of the whole game changed in, in that, in, with that group, and Kaminga was the worst part of that group in addition to a hobbled Jordan Poole who was also bad, but a huge part of the reason why things got away and that, to me, was, all right, he's done for the night. And, and I think Kerr gave him, uh, you know, to me, Steve Kerr probably wishes he could have gone back and not played him at all. Mm. It, 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 like, mm. But he gave him the one more chance. And, you know, Moody got his run when Looney picked up the fifth foul. And, and I thought, damn, he may be forced to go back to Kaminga, even though he doesn't want to, or Jermichael Green, even though he doesn't want to. But he went to Moody. I thought Moody played well enough. He wasn't perfect, but he was steady enough to where he's somebody I think moving forward could be out there. But I think if he's out there, it's likely going to be in place of Jonathan Kaminga. I, I would go away from Kaminga for the remainder of the series unless it's an emergency situation, injury, foul trouble. Maybe Kirk wow. gives him one more chance at home. I, I'll leave that. Like Maybe he gives him one more chance at home. But to me, it felt like the four minutes last night at the top of the second quarter was the extra chance, and he was so bad that it was night-night uh, moving forward for Jonathan Kaminga. I'll, I'll, I'll give you one more little caveat to that. A, a Draymond Green suspension would probably be Jonathan Kaminga's best shot to get meaningful mm, run again mm. in this series because at that point, at that point, it would almost be, hey, all right, YOLO, you got to just throw him out there because you don't have Draymond. And, and you hope that, you know, in the energy of Oracle, I'm sorry, of Chase, he can make some, make some plays and play with a freedom almost of just, almost, hey, it doesn't really matter. Like, go let it hang out. We're not supposed to win without Draymond anyway. Maybe that's your best chance to, to succeed. And I'll wrap it on this note. It's not completely his fault that he's not ready because guys, people come down my road and goo. We've had heated conversations about it on the air, off the air. Right, right. It's not completely his fault mm. that he's not ready to contribute at this level consistently. Yeah. And we can have a conversation about that, but that also doesn't mean that he just gets to play and work through it in a playoff series, especially on a night like last night where the game was hanging in the balance from the second quarter, like that's where Steve Kerr at the end of the night, he's saying, damn, I thought we did a good job with the guys that played and having a shot to win it with, with five minutes left or two minutes left because the Warriors spent two quarters from the midpoint of the second to the midpoint of the fourth just fighting like hell as hard as they could to not get run out of the gym in that environment that was so hostile and ready to, ready to pop basically from the time the game flipped. All right, J.D., a lot to chew on. Thanks for your time, and uh, we'll talk to you more this week, I'm sure. Thanks. All right, Apolo yeah. apologies for using all my time on Kaminga. Appreciate no, you. That's all right.
We'll take it. We yeah, ask the question. Well, man. Back to the phones. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>